2016, Day, the people of Ikare in Akoko area of the state celebrated the 25th anniversary of the Education and Community Empowerment Focus NGO, BC Ogunjobi Foundation. But we have started an e program, which was the topic of today. That is, how do we encourage reading culture in the community? How do I one day be able to grow the potential volition you have from this atmosphere? And what we are doing is that we are partnering with a group in America. They supply us the equipment, but we are responsible for all the things. And we came with a pilot project at Emmanuel School in Recare, which was the school I attended for my primary school. We have built, we have got 50 of those kiddies. Uh, um, Each of them contains five, uh, 200 books. It has capacity for 5,000. But we wanted to test run it. And got a teacher who is there to pay for the teacher. They have a generator we are paying for this one to run the generator. And they do tests for them at the end of every term. So you will see a kind of a name this we are saying a child before the age of 10, or by the age of 10, that read 10 hundred books is not likely to lose that habit. And that maybe one day in our Founded in 1991 by the renowned economist and management expert Elder B.C. Ogunjobi O.O.N., a product of the University of Ibadan and the Bradford University in the United Kingdom, where he graduated in economics and international development studies respectively. The vision to start the foundation was born out of the need to give back to the community and the place of his birth that has given him so much. The B.C. Ogunjobi Foundation was started on the 12th of May, uh, 1991. Well, I was living in uh, Ivory Coast, or Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, two things motivated me to do that. The first was that when I was growing up, particularly in the primary school, we had, uh, had a, a number of classmates who were as good as myself, if not better, in terms of academic performance. As soon as I left primary school, I went straight to the secondary school, and from there to the university non-stop because I stood on the shoulders of my parents. My father could afford to pay for my education. And there was a particular young man in my class who is equally very good. And he has fantastic handwriting. In fact, when you look at my writing at times, when I write, I want to read over, I cannot recall what I have written, worse than that of a doctor. But this man has very, very good handwriting, so he will not be able to afford to buy books, but I can afford. So I will give him my book to write my name in my book. We left primary school, he couldn't go further. F very soon after leaving school, I went to the university. And by 1971, I was already a graduate. I was already working with the Central Bank of Nigeria, and I had my own personal car. And I drove to Ikere Ikiti. And I parked at the petrol station to fill my tank. And whom could I find? That same boy who was my classmate is now a petrol attendant. And I know there was not very much between us except 
that I had somebody to pay my fees. So that was the key element that drives me to say, if I can help people like him, then I will have been a happier person. I will have made some contribution because I believe knowledge is power. Because if you look at our motto, it says, knowledge is power. And knowledge in the service of people and development. Knowledge is the one that gives you power to overcome your all your own shortcomings. The power to lead and to be an effective follower. BC Ogunjobi Foundation, BOF, is a non-for-profit and non-governmental organization and carries the mandate for assisting the educationally disadvantaged youth in the country. Assist brilliant children with poor parental background to acquire higher education and training among other objectives. So, if we could give opportunities for people to acquire the knowledge which is power, they would believe could have made a very strong contribution. My father never went to school. He was a complete uh, illiterate, but a hard-working person. He went into all forms of trade. He was uh, a lumberman in uh, Ondo, and then later on became uh, a shatterer of vehicles. He would shatter the vehicle from a car, take them to Onicha. He, later on, he was buying uh, you know, old clothes and selling them to okay. Later on, he became um, a produce buyer. So he was became very successful. And but he had he 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 knew the he knew he knew the value of education, and try as much as possible to see any of his children will have the education as much as they can. These are the two things that made me to focus on uh, education, assisting, uh, empowering the youth to acquire, to acquire knowledge and education, which will transform them completely from one level to the other. And this has been uh, the driving force between you know behind us you know since 1991 when we started and when we started we started with just about 10 people and the initial amount was about 10,000 naira but we realized that that 10,000 naira coming at a critical time in the life of a student makes the difference we thank God we've been able to do that you know for 25 years now we have done nearly 900 uh, beneficiaries and they cut across all universities, cut across all disciplines and of course we also have uh, a lot of physically uh, challenged people who have been benefiting from the program. What started 25 years ago with 10 students has today grown to become one of the largest and focused education and community empowerment platform with hands-on strategy for value addition. Appraising the activities vis-a-vis -vis milestones 5 years, 10, 15, 20 and 25, the story of BOF has been of success despite key challenges. Yeah, I think when, it, when we started... Uh Two things happened. When I was living outside the country, so I couldn't cut process. And he will organize and then send me the list and I'll pay for all the people. At the end of five years, we got complaints that, oh, maybe they are favoring one group or the other. Then I decided we must have a board of trustees. And to have a board of trustees, we also then, then decided we have to register with CAC. Okay. Okay. So we now have to go through that process of getting it registered as an NGO with CAC and with a full 
Board of Trustees, which is chaired by Professor uh, Bomi Alek Belaye of the University of Ibadan. He is a for professor of information technology. So with his coming in, I think uh, things change you know, radically and we are able now to have a more structured approach in, uh, in, in, in the process. As time goes on, we introduced uh, the lecture series whereby we invite uh, guest speakers from the universities, you know, from the private sector to deliver uh, lectures, you know, during the course of the uh, award ceremony. And we have gone ahead to publish uh, a number or a selected number of the lectures into uh, a book for, in a book form, which is called Sharing Knowledge for Youth Empowerment and National Development. This contains lectures you know, over a period of 10, year, 10 years. And that book, this book was launched by um, Chief Emeka Ayoku, the former Secretary General of the Commonwealth. In addition, we also moved on to looking at issues not just from uh, education, but in the area of health, particularly with the uh, pediatrics. Incidentally, this idea was brought in by one of the beneficiaries who happens to be a medical doctor. So we worked with him in uh, the CMD OWO, and we Annually, we had small, small programs with the uh, pediatrics department of the hospital, and he took the lead in uh, doing that. Besides being a historic initiative that consistently harnessed the talent of indigent students, BC Ogunjobi Foundation has succeeded in forming strategic international partnership with key international bodies like World Reader USA with the e-reader platforms. This is in addition to the annual lecture series which featured notable scholars discussing bonding educational issues and community development matters. We have also gone you know, to uh, address the issue of uh, encouraging the culture of reading, particularly among the youth. We have these kiddies which we are uh, with the cooperation in partnership with the World Reader United States, whereby we have the kiddies and we have uh, selected a primary school. In fact, the primary school which uh, I attended uh, in Ondo State, whereby we have built a library with these kiddies. Yes. The children can borrow, take it home, and read. We have a hundred books in each of the kiddies and the children are tested every time to see how we can influence the young people empower them to be able to read so we are hoping that a child that by the age of 10 by the age of 11 is been able to read a hundred books will never never forget that habit. And I think that's what we are doing at the moment. We have just uh, uh, re recruited a lecturer from the University of Lagos to do the evaluation. And the result of the evaluation was presented you know, during the uh, 2016 uh, edition of our award. And it's very, it's very, very, uh, very encouraging. And we hope that uh, maybe in another 20, 25 years, if I'm still alive, you may have one well issue you can imagine, you know, from the uh, from the catchment area. That has been the development, you know, over the years uh, of the BOF. Talking about 15 and the 20 years, we now look at it from the perspective of sustainability. Uh, supposing my children are not interested in following this. What do we do? And we were looking at 
three options. The first option was to uh, buy shares in the name of uh, BOF. We bought a number of shares, but unfortunately during the last financial crisis, yes. we lost a lot of money. So we felt that was not the best uh, option. We then decided we will uh, build student hostels. And the revenue from the student hostels will be used you know, to finance the foundation in fee. And later on, we realized that uh, with the student riots, with all this, might not be the best option. So I then decided uh, that my father had a, a cocoa store, which had not been used for up to 15 years. So we decided to pull it down and to construct a plaza, which we called BOF Center which will serve a dual purpose. One, it will provide a center for youth activities, but at the same time, it has stores which will be rented out and the revenue generated on that will be used to finance uh, BOF on a sustainable basis. I say this is what we have done over the last uh, five years, and uh, over the last 25 years, and the last ceremony which we had uh, is to give the award for 2015-2016 uh, at the same time to commission that BOF center. Uh, it was very successful and I think we had quite uh, a large number of people and friends who came uh, to witness the occasion. Sometimes last day, that was May 2015, a project was launched by the Bisi Okujobi Foundation, which is the World Reader, E-Reader project. And after one year, the foundation considered it necessary to measure the impact of this project, which is the reason for this presentation. I don't know if you can see the screen. We, this study was carried out to actually assess the impact of the use of the e-reader by the pupils of, Im of Emmanuel Anglican Primary School. Actually read and enjoy themselves. So, last year, this foundation donated 50 of these devices to Emmanuel Anglican Primary School. And after the donation, we considered it necessary to study or to conduct an assessment of what this thing, this device, what impact it has made on the student. Then we also want, wanted to find out the reading possibilities the e-reader device offered the school and measure the success of the initiative and its impact on the reading habits of the school I want to state at this note that sometimes we we normally think that to be literate means that to be ready, to be able to read and write. But in 2004, UNESCO described literacy as the ability to identify, to understand, to interpret, to create, and communicate, compute, and use printed and written materials associated with varying concepts. It is, however, not enough to be literate, but it is better to be able to read, to have passion for reading. Okay, thank you. This is a sample of the device that was donated to the school. So, skill that must be nurtured from a child's earliest year. When children know how to read and write, they only require support to reach their full potential as readers. It is the foundation of much enjoyment in life, and it is closely related to vocational efficiency. The ability to read well is absolutely critical to success in life. I just want to put up an example here. I remember one of my lecturers once said something some years ago. He said there was a time he was to travel out of Nigeria and was traveling with 
a friend of his who is not a Nigerian. He said at every point he was asking questions. Asking questions, what is this? What's this thing about? And the next thing the person told him that, can't you read? Read. These things are inscribed everywhere. He said he was a bit embarrassed, but that actually changed everything about him. So anywhere he gets to, because he has he is able to read, he could read and understand whatever is being communicated to him. Tell the students, they must work hard. And anybody who finish his own first continuous um, scholarship will be given to him or her. And so also the parents, please encourage your children at home. When they are reading, don't disturb them. Because there is time for everything. When they come back from school, after food, when they, 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 they want to rest, or you want to send them errands, but give them at least one hour to them to, 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 them, to be able to read and do their homework so that they will achieve greatness in life. Knowledge is power. What we are giving them today, it is for them forever. Nobody can take it from them. When they know it, they know it throughout their life. And they will achieve success in life in Jesus' name. Amen. So the e-readers, they are 50 in number. Being presented to Himalayan Anglican Primary School at Dobubis. On behalf of the BTA, SBLC, the staff and pupils of this school appreciate the chief, the BC Ogunjobi Foundation for this gesture. And I promise, as a friend in my advice, that we are going to handle the project properly so that what the, what the sponsor wants to achieve so that it will be achievable. Thank you all. No doubt, the past 25 years must have been an exceptional one for the founder of BC Ogunjobi Foundation, Elder BC Ogunjobi ON, we would like to say. But the achievements over the years has been more exceptional as over 90 indigenous students have successfully benefited from the foundation. This is also in addition to other initiatives which include global health initiative support for mother and child. All these has been achieved despite the funding challenges it has to contend with. Well, I think uh, so far uh, the whole program has been funded from my own personal uh, income. Except when we launched the book, I definitely received uh, some support. I think maybe we raised about two or three million uh, during that period, you know, in support of the book. And of course, this was plowed back into the into the BOF. Yes, we are looking at a possibility of uh, uh, seeking partnership, you know, and support from bigger organizations or international uh, charity organizations. And that was one of the reasons why we decided to do the evaluation in a professional evaluation by. Uh, a lecturer from the University of Lagos, so that by the time we put our package together, it will be credible. Uh, we hope that uh, we will be approaching various organizations, the successes, the achievements, and the challenges which we face. Maybe people looking at it or seeing uh, this program might you know, think that maybe we are doing something uh, very useful and therefore want to partner. Uh, with us. An exact roadmap to multiplying achievements, prosperity and satisfaction have been set for BC Ogunjobi Foundation BOF and the future plans will incorporate series and some key milestones and deliverables. Yes, the, our ambition is to uh, have a radio station, yes. an FM radio uh, at, that, at the center. We have applied to the uh, federal government to uh, the, the 
uh, federal government through the appropriate ministry to give a, a license for an FM radio. Because we believe such an FM radio is not only going to disseminate information about education, but about development and governance. We feel that such an FM radio will be able to teach people on governance. They will make their elected officers more accountable to what is happening in the local community. One of the things we like to do, when a contract is awarded by the state government, we would like to know who are the con We take those projects as their own projects. This is a program source of young people who can display their, you know, can display their talent. I think this is, you know, uh, an area which uh, we want to be able to to make some uh, some contribution. Hopefully, uh, in a year or two, this station will be operational, and the center will be uh, that will be housing uh, the, the, the the station, and we'll be able to look at the culture of the people. I always talk to people that uh, in Akoko uh, we have more than 200 dialects and the towns are less than five kilometers from each other and yet they don't speak the same uh, dialect. People in Ikare don't speak the same dialect with Akumba. The when Akumba don't say the, the same with Oka, which are less than five kilometers apart. Why? We want to do the we want to know why how what what is the history of the languages in that area? We are working with the University of Adekunle uh, Adjaja University for somebody to be able you know to uh, go into the research in terms of the syntax of the language, you know why the differences, where do they originate from? And uh, in my one of my jokes, I say that uh, the the town of Babel, you know, was actually uh, started in uh, Akoko. That's why Tolon did the Waru. Hopefully that uh, we can make some contribution in getting to know why such diversity of languages within a very, very short, uh, short, short radius of that. And the place is very, very cosmopolitan. And the place is, you know, uh, well located. We are five I mean, uh, less than 40 kilometers from Kogi, less than 20 kilometers to the next town in Nekiti, you know, below, which is less than 40 kilometers from Ikele. So it's, that area is, is a center that can, uh, that can reach nearly five states within a radius of, you know, 40, 50 kilometers. So I think that radio station will be a very unifying force, you know, in that area, while at the same time projecting the culture of the people. Well, I would like to say BOF has started as BC Ogunjobi Foundation, but with its expansion, I want it to become Bless Others Foundation, which means others can piggyback into it, yes. others can contribute into it. It becomes Bless Others Foundation. It still remains BOF.